still in Waterford. Um, it's a nice town. I do like it. Uh, great shopping. The harbour master has been tremendous, and the people we've met have been lovely. Uh, but I'm here on my own. It's not the happiest of occasions, in a way. <sighs> we've said before that one of the reasons we hang about the UK is because our parents are elderly, and. Gainer's 97, mine's in her early 80s. Sadly, Gainer's has passed away. So I'm here on my own, and Gainer is back in England and Wales because her mum lives on the borders. And she's doing what needs to be done over there with her sisters and her brother. Um, no idea how long it's going to take. It seems to be a very slow process in that part of the country. So, it is what it is. I'm just going to do both tasks. Uh, the cockpit needs a heck of a clean. The, the cockpit sole, we never got recalled when we did the seats in Menai last year. Um, so I might do that. might take the winches off. It's been a couple of years since they were taken out, cleaned and greased. Um, just little jobs like that, really. What more can I say? I guess the question is, at the end of the last episode we were in Dunmore East. How did we magically transform ourselves from Dunmore East to 17 nautical miles up the river to Waterford? Well, the answer is, of course, blindingly simple. We didn't bother filming it. Um, when we got into Dunmore, um, we were at the end of a day sale and we got the bad news just as we were coming in. And our only concern really was getting anchored, getting our heads down for the night and getting back up here in the morning. So the upshot of that is that we never bother put the cameras on charge. We just came up the river, which was, I have to say, a lovely journey. It's a very, very nice, pleasant trip up here. Uh, we'll try and film it on the way back out so you can get a look at it. But um, our main concern was getting in here. Um, because we didn't have any of the cameras attached and we hadn't redone them, um, you missed one of the best ferry gliding manoeuvres I've done in quite some time. <laughs> uh, if, you do try and, if you do arrive here, do try and arrive at high water or something like that, some sort of slack. Don't try and arrive in more or less mid-tide. We missed high water and we arrived with the tide running. Um, so ferry gliding it into the berth was the only way to do it. Anyway, the boat was in. The harbour master was standing waiting for us. Very, very helpful chap. And um, we got all Gainer's paperwork sorted and off she went. So, I'm keeping myself busy. I've got plenty to do. Uh, I was going to see the cockpit floor today, but I ran out of caulk, so I didn't bother with that. Um, I've been cleaning the travel stains that you get on a boat. I've been waxing the cockpit and, and doing that today. That's keeping me occupied. Uh, the boat's in water, the tanks are full. We will need to get some diesel. Just little jobs like that. airing clothes, just taking them out of the wardrobe, hanging them up, letting them air for a bit. You know, it's just part of boat life. Making curry. <laughs> oh dear, that'll compensate. Um, one of the good things about here is the shops aren't very far. They're literally like five minutes walk up. We walk up out through the door, walk up, and there's a food hall a couple of minutes up the street. Um, that's great. There's an Asian food market just over there that looks fantastic. So I'm going to go and have a look at that. And um, one of the downsides is the bottles of wine are kind of expensive, even when you allow for the Euro conversion. Uh, but on the other side of things, things like beef are a lot cheaper down here than they are back up north or, or in England. So swings and roundabouts, but you're losing some, you gain on the others. So I'll get this done and I'll get my... Ooh, I'll get my chicken gel frizzy. My leftover chicken gel frizzy from last night into Mr. D. And um, in comes the rice. And that's that done. going to sit here on a pleasant spring evening and eat a rather large bowl of curry. Well, I 
I've been away for just over two weeks. Um, I've uh, got a whole load of stuff organised that I needed to get organised. But I'm afraid to say um, the stuff I've organised is like that much. And the stuff I've got to organise is like up here. So because of that, um, I've got to get back to Liverpool. And um, what Beverly and I have decided to do is that we're both going to go out back to Liverpool. Because I have to go back as well, don't I? You do. Um, you do. I have to go back because... <sighs> My mother trusted you to sort out her will. So... <laughs> The sheer fact that my mum decided that you were the right person to be trusted is just fantastic. But it just means that we've got a, a, a mountain of paperwork to sort out. But you know us. We're going to try and use this as an opportunity. We're still going to make videos because at the end of the day, this is about life on a boat rather than, yeah, we like to sail. But it's all about what happens. Uh, and we're on an adventure because if it's planned, it's a trip. But as you can tell, ours is really not planned. So ours is an adventure. Beverly and I are in Waterford and we're here with, come on, Yvonne. Yay! Yeah, from Wave Dancer. And um, she's just told us that um, behind us is a building that's had a roof on it since the Viking times. Um, I know buildings that don't even get roofs for the last about 20 years, so Viking times, pretty impressive. ready to go uh, it's not the direction we want to go but needs must when the devil drives absolutely and uh, yeah we're doing a complete 180 degrees and we're going that way so um, but hopefully we can get the process started and then hopefully after that we'll be able to go for cruising I've no idea but you know, like I say, we are definitely on an adventure, not a trip, because nothing's planned. Oh, every, everything's planned, but sometimes the plans don't happen. <laughs> no, they don't. And they get derailed on a regular basis. Yeah. So what's this piece of bread for? Oh, this is so that we can uh, check the uh, tide, because um, um, basically we want to go at slack and um high water i i basically think that high water and slack does not um occur at the same time i think slack will be a little bit early so we're chucking bits of bread on basically we're chucking bits of bread to see what is happening but i'm on the helm today and it'll just be good just to get back into sailing and hopefully think about sailing and nothing else because at the moment my head is like <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've uh, just left Waterford and we're having to motor this section because uh, there's a lot of mud banks about and things like that. We've just passed a pillar um, or a pyramid, whatever you want to call it, which marks the deeper side of the channel. Over that way it's considerably shallow. It's, what is it, 20 metres here, you said? Um, I've got 19.7 metres under the keel. We've got 19 okay. under the keel and our keel is 2 metres down, so that gives you some idea of where we are. Whereas on the other side it goes quite shallow to 2 metres. Yeah, so um, 20 metres there, 2 metres there, and we're in the middle. <laughs> but, um, so we're, we're heading back out to sea, we're heading to Kilmore today, and um, we're hoping to make up a lot of time in this passage because the tide is just turning up here and we're hoping the tide will take us out. Beverly's been in Waterford for just over two weeks whereas I was in Waterford for two days. Uh, but what I saw of it was really, really nice. But I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed because we went out for a meal and because um, I have gluten problems, 
it was a real struggle to find a restaurant, but the good old curry house came through. Hey! <laughs> and that's the curry house that's just near the... Yeah, near um, the marina called Peppers. Peppers. Yeah. Um, but that came through and, uh, yeah, it actually had a selection of gluten-free, otherwise I was going to be on cake, 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 or shock horror, cake! cake. <laughs> So the wind's all over the place, we've got 30 knots of wind on the nose at the minute, whereas we had it on the beam and a little before that we had it behind us. It's because we're changing directions and the wind is following the river and getting funneled along. We're hoping that when we finally get to the more open sea, that this is just an acceleration effect here in the river caused by the valleys and that the wind will back off a bit. But we'll see what we see. Uh, one of the nice little things about this is there's a, an absolutely fantastic tree house just over there. And uh, we were very impressed with it on the way up, but we didn't manage to get a picture of it, so we've got one for you today. Kilmore Quay, uh, I have to be honest, there's not an awful lot at Kilmore Quay. Um, there are a few shops, but there's no fuel, uh, but the water is really, really fast. Um, one of our subscribers came down and um, has just sort of like just left now, and it's really nice meeting subscribers. So do keep an eye on us on AIS, we will love to see you. Um, and um, that's about it, really, because otherwise I'm going to be drowned out by people. Well, we moved downstairs. <laughs> the people were getting a bit too much. Anyway, we do love them though. Anyway, um, we've come downstairs and um, we're just getting ready uh, to go off. Uh, but last night the swell was just ridiculous and apparently uh, there's been a lot of swell coming into the entrance of um, uh, Waterford um, River all week. Um, and that's the thing about Waterford. I would say it's a great marina, very, very sheltered, but you have absolutely no idea what it's doing out there in the sea. 
At least here you can look over the wall. At least here, yeah, you can look over the wall and if it looks like rubbish, you're not going anywhere. But it's uh, calmer today, so we'll be out.